Good morning. My name is Ray Nino. I'm from Word of Faith. And I'm going to have a teaching again on music. Uh, I want to start right here. And I want you to listen closely. Heavy, Christian heavy metal is not a pathway to heaven, but rather a gateway to hell. Those of you who are still fans of Christian heavy metal and wrapped up in the midst of it, I want you to listen to this verse as well. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 through 24. It says, but test and prove <clears throat> all things until you can recognize what is good to, to that hold fast. And this is the key. Abstain from evil. Shrink from it. Keep aloof from it in whatever form and whatever kind it may be. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. Separate you from the profane things. Make you pure and holy. Consecrate you to God. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of the Lord, Jesus Christ, our Messiah. He wants you to abstain from evil, shrink from it. I've tried to warn many of you I've, in my prior, prior programs, and this is another warning. This is a very serious warning. 1 John 2.26 says, These things have I written to you with reference to those who are trying to deceive you, seducing you, leading you away from the truth and sound doctrine. Satan has a plan. He's roaming about trying to find those who he can seduce and bring in under his power. And that power that he's using in this case is heavy metal music. If you notice the Bible, the children of Israel, you know, uh, chose to, whenever they chose to go on their own way and do their own thing, what seemed to follow always is captivity. You know, even when he freed them, he freed them from Egypt immediately from the time they left, they went right back into that captivity. They started worshiping before the golden calf. Well, Christian heavy metal is the modern day golden calf. Here, here's a testimony of a youth. This is, this is very important to listen to this because this is not me. It's not some you know, fundamentalists saying it. This is a young young man who was involved in heavy metal. And this is his testimony. He said, when listening to hard rock music, even before getting into heavier, thrasher type music, I often wanted to die. Granted, I also had a pretty crummy life. But now I believe those suicidal thoughts came actually from the music. Later, as I got deeper, heavier into the music, the su suicidal thoughts increased. The music is very dark and will absolutely, without a doubt, cause negativity, confusion, and darkness in your mind. It opens a door for the devil to enter into your life. Christian or not, heavy metal and hard rock is not holy. A discerning Christian should never listen to it. As for non-Christian heavy metal and hard rock, it's even worse. Christian heavy metal is by no means, this is me, a pathway to heaven. It's a gateway to hell. That's what he was saying. I mean, it almost took his life. You know, because he gave to it. And that darkness and all that permeates you, you know, I mean, I was very involved in it when I was young myself, and I can tell you. And, but you can, ask, you can say, well, how can I say all this? Who am I to say what I'm saying? I started one of the first Christian heavy metal labels there were, Pure Metal Records. It featured some of the best-known Christian bands at the time, bands like White Cross, Bride, Tempest, Messiah Prophet, Saint, One Bad Pig, even those from overseas like Leviticus. At the time, you know, I hoped to reach the youth with this music. I was deceived. 
Instead, instead, many became enslaved by the music. You know, I was enslaved. You know, I, I, you know, I would go to bed at night and I would just blare the music. I'd have huge speakers in my room. You know, it would pound me so hard, and I finally, I guess it would pound me into the point I was so tired I would go to sleep. But that's how I went to sleep. There is no musical sound or graphic presentation like album covers, t-shirts, website, in music that's any closer to Satanism, Satanism itself other than heavy metal music. That, I mean, it's so close. I mean, you, you look at their album covers. You look at... You look at their looks, you look at their, I mean, they, they have they, darkness all over. Many of them dye their hair black just to be darker. It's darkness all over. To believe that you can put on an image of Satan and present Jesus is a deception. Johannes Johnson, a medal for Jesus, which is a website, states, Christian metal is just as brutal and heavy as secular metal when it comes to the music. What differs is the lyrics. Instead of having bad, destructive, and meaningless lyrics, the lyrics in Christian music are positive. Now, it's difficult. It's very difficult for me to see anything being, you know, G that wants to portray Jesus as brutal, you know, you know, and, and to see that Jesus would be portrayed as heavy metal. I can't, it's being, it's Satanism. It's presenting the dark, the black, the gloom. In a total, it is total deception to believe that you can look like a Satanist, you can sound like a Satanist, you can act like a Satanist, but because you use Christian lyrics, you're now Christian. It's total deception. Total deception. You're giving over your whole life, you know, your whole being. You know, you're allowing really in truth those devils to inhabit you, those devils to take you over. And then you think you're going to say and talk about Jesus. I I'm sorry, that's not true. Ephesians 5.15 says, Look carefully then how you walk. Walk purposefully and worthy and accurately, not as the unwise and witless but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Why would you want to look and sound and relate to people whose music prides themselves on vulgarity and perverseness? The Word of God, I, I read it earlier, the Word of God says, shrink from it. Keep aloof from it, you know, <laughs> otherwise don't be seen as part of it. Christian metal bands love to be compared to their counterparts. They want to be part of it, you know, in the secular world. They take great pride in it. That comparison could take on many aspects, you know, their music, their dress, their tattoos, their concert presentation, their logos, you know, and the t-shirts they sell. They are nothing but a wicked presentation of evil born in the pits of hell. That's what it all is. Satan's brought that understanding and those ways to those people. They thought God was. God's not going to present himself as a dark, gloom, grotesque type people. You know, pounding away at people, acting in brutality and perverseness. That's not God. That's not God. So many of the Christian heavy metal band bodies are just covered with tattoos and their secular counterparts and their fans alike. Leviticus 19.28 says, You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print or tattoo any marks upon you. I am the Lord. 1 Kings 18.28 says, and they cried aloud and cut themselves after the custom with knives and lances until the blood gushed out upon them. Historically, the origin, <clears throat> the origin of tattoos has always been associated with paganism, demonism, Baal worship, 
shamanism, mysticism, heathenism, and many other pagan beliefs. And again, the question is, why would you want to associate yourself in that thinking with all those, those types of people, all those paganists, all those Satanists? Tattooing is nothing more than another form of bloodletting or passing. Throughout history, the cutting of the flesh and bloodletting have been always rituals performed to unleash demonic and supernatural powers. Look, every time a young man or woman or old man or older woman allows themselves to be tattooed, you know, paint it with death, and cut, they're opening themselves for demonic activity in their lives by participating in it. You know, God, God in the Old Testament obviously, you know, uh, warned the people. He warned them because he didn't want them to be part of these cults. He didn't want them to be part of this paganism. You know, a lot of people say, well, it's the Old Testament. Well, God doesn't want you to be part of the cults or paganism today either. I mean, so the Old Testament isn't done away with. The Old Testament is as much part of the Bible as the New. So when he says, you shall not make cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print tattoo any marks upon you, I am the Lord. He's saying it to you. He's not just throwing it out there and saying, oh, that was the Old Testament. It's gone and passed. Not true. The other thing heavy metal is, incorporate so much of the gothic styles you know what you say well, what are the gothic styles you know those gothic styles of those real medieval type looking letters that darkness it's always associated with paganism and satanism it's heavy metal incorporates that gothic styles in their album covers in their dress in their lyrics in their stage shows it's a match that's made in hell, really. Dark paganism and, and feels all help give heavy metal, both, that, both Christian and secular, a stronger, more powerful image. At least that's what they believe. Gothic style is said to be characterized by gloom, mystery, and grotesque. And so is heavy metal. But, you know, it's not just the practicing of tattooing. It's not just painting one's body. It's not just using gothic imagery that forms such a link between heavy metal and music, heavy metal music and paganism. It's the very roots and origin of that music itself. Christopher Knowles wrote a book called The Secret of Rock and Roll. He gives us a better understanding of why we should believe that this music is rooted even as far back as those ancient times. He wrote in that book, he describes a patent group, a patent group who worships, worships goddesses with drumming, stringed instruments, and dancing. Noel states they would dress in full hoplite leather armor for their performance. Look, it's just, you know, they dress just like you know, the Judas priest, the kiss, the, you know, where did they get all that? You know, you see some people today going out in that look and all that. It's, and it portrays nothing but Satanism. And that, you know, and that's where it's come from in history. And that's what our modern day metal bands are doing, including the Christian ones. Their performance was described, as described, could just as easily described Slayer or Iron Maiden. It says, he says, basically, they fingered the melody on their stringed instruments. You know, they're just like those heavy metal bands making that, this gross sound, bringing about a frenzy. You know, when, when this music hits, it's full of demonic, you know, activity. And they're trying to bring those audiences in that frenzy and bring it. It says, you know, that guitar is there doing that frenzy. He said, they raised their shrill vocal cry. And that was supported by thundering drums, a terrifying sound. I tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, it's going to sound just like what we listen to if you listen to heavy metal music today. This is hundreds of years ago. Satan was at work centuries before laying the groundwork to steal the hearts of youth and mankind. That's, his, that's, it, that's what he wanted to do. 
That's what he still wants to do. That's what he's going to want to do. That's his job. He's got a limited time here. He's going to use the darkness of dark to take those captive who he can and steal them from Jesus. That carried that whole sound carried forward into the blues rock and psychedelic rock music of the 60s and 70s that gave us what we call today heavy metal music. Groups like Led Zeppelin, which is one of the, was one of the largest bands of that time, so influenced heavy metal music, both musically and culturally. The bands, and listen to what it says here, because it's just like what I just said, the band's heavy, distorted guitar sound, screaming vocals, and aggressive pounding drums is what became very acceptable as heavy metal style music. Sounds just like what was happening centuries before. Sounds like the devil was at work. Sounds like his work was being fulfilled. At the very core of this band, Led Zeppelin's philosophies, they were rooted in lyrical content and teachings of black musician Aleister Crowley and his satanic magic cult. I mean, there were many other bands, you know, that had that same occultish type feel and look and horror inspired lyrics, you know, that were throwing it at the youth, throwing it at the youth, trying to convert them into what they felt was what they wanted you to be. Satanist. It's Satanist, people. You know, you think, oh, I'm just listening to music. No. You know, you're being jumped upon. You're being rode. You're being converted. You're being possessed. You're being enslaved by the music. I mean, look at the look at the audiences. Look at the headbangers. Look at the metalheads. Look at the way they act. Look at the. I mean, it's a. It said it was a frenzy. They act as a frenzy. I'm sorry, but that that's nothing but Satanism. So the very origins, though, you realize you go back. The origins of what I just said to you. You know, the the, the whole centuries before pagan and Led Zeppelin and all their music, these origins are what the Christian metal band, that's how they got their inspiration. That's what they try to look like. That's what they try to act like. That's what they think they are. And they think that acting and looking and being like that, they can still, just because they use Christian lyrics, be presenting Christ. It doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. Proverbs 4 14 through 16, because he says it very clearly here. Enter not in the path of the wicked. I'm sorry, but the, the heavy metal community and culture is nothing but the wicked. Go not in the way of the evil man. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. Pass away. He doesn't want to even get you near it. He says, pass not by it. Don't get near it is what he's saying. You know, Leviticus 10, 1 and 2 said that uh, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective ceremonial censers, put fire in them, placed incense in it, and offered strange, unauthorized, unacceptable fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them to do. And fire came down from the presence of God, and he devoured them, and they died before the Lord. God's saying to you, do not offer strange and unholy fire before the Lord. as he, He's not called you into heavy metal. That, that's strange fire before God. Heavy metal is strange fire before God. And you're deceived if you think it's anything but. He, remember, he destroyed Nadab and Abihu uh, because they brought strange, unauthorized fire before him. There was another strange fire brought forth in the Middle Ages. It was a music interval. And you got to listen to this because, again, you can say, oh, it's this or it's that. Satan has been planning. Satan has been laying seeds. Satan has been involved in all these things, getting these things. But this strange fire was a musical interview of a tritone or diminished fifth referred to as the devil's chord or the devil in music. And subsequently, it was banned by the church back in those days, in the Middle Ages. Interesting that this devil's core 
has become a musical foundation used in much of heavy metal music, both Christian and secular. The Devil's Chord is an evil-sounding combination of notes that's designed to create a foreboding atmosphere. It's, it's, it's there to create the sound, you know, that's there. And so many of the bands, it starts out, you can feel it. It just sounds this, it sounds this disjointed sound. It says it's dissonant. It says it's, it's an intense interval. They use it to create a whole mood. It's, you know, and it's been used, you know, by all of them. It's been used by the, the, the total. Second Thessalonians says the coming of the Antichrist, one that's through the activity of Satan with great power and all kinds of counterfeit miracles and deceptive sounds and wonders. All of them lies. With the coming of the Antichrist, I'm sure Satan will be using heavy metal music to bring his message to his people. Look, he's already doing it. He's already doing it. Christians think the message is, their message is different from the secular counterparts. They think it's different because the music has Christian lyrics. It still is dark. It still is demonic. They have the demonic dress, the tattoos, the gothic presentation, the evil chord. Remember that dissident chord that starts out the mood to set the, the whole mood of a concert. It brings about, truthfully, not the Christian message. It brings about the message that Satan wants, darkness. You know, what did the young man say? Confusion. You know, that's what it brought him to. It brought him to suicidal thoughts. But Second Peter says this. Now, after listening to all that, he says, Therefore, believers... Be more diligent and make certain about God's calling of you. Choosing you, that's who he did. He chose you, chose you. He says, be sure, what? Be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms your religious, I'm sorry, your relationship with God. You know, he, he, he doesn't want you out there in some headbanger being caught up in the frenzy, acting like a demonite. You know, he, he wants you to make sure your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. For by doing these things, actively developing these virtues, you will never stumble in your spiritual growth and you will live a life that leads others away from sin. For in this way, entry into eternal kingdom of God and our Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly provided for you. Choosing to be a headbanger, you know, a metalhead, uh, you know, is not being diligent. It's not being certain about your calling. And for sure, that behavior does not reflect or confirm your relationship with God. I mean, think about the way people act. Think about the way they they look. You know, I, I, I can just think even about the albums that we did, you know, or the, the concerts that I went to. You know, I, I went to a Led Zeppelin concert. I went to a Led Zeppelin concert high on LSD. Led Zeppelin started to play the their famous song, Stairway to Heaven. You know, it, it, and it's anything but a stairway to heaven. It's a pathway to hell. You know, so when I say... Heavy metal music is a pathway to hell. It is a pathway to hell. You know, Christian heavy music is on that same pathway. You know, when I was there, I was listening to that music, you know, and, you know, in the song, it talks about the piper. And, you know, and the piper was piping. And he's trying to get you to walk up those stairways. And he's trying to get you to walk in to the very demonic, you know, uh, trips and you know I, I it was a very bad trip for me that night although i don't know that any lsd trip is ever a good trip but especially that night it was very bad and it could have been extremely bad i could have been like the young man you know that suicide could have hit you know many things could have happened you know i i could have went out and did very violent things to myself so could you so realize that when you're in the midst of listening to that music 
when you're in the midst of taking, you know, doing whatever you're doing, or when you think that you're trying to draw nigh to God, you're drawing close to the devil. And the devil is trying to draw close to you. You know, that pounding beat, that frenzied, you know, atmosphere there. You know, it's trying to draw up close to you and pull you in and pull you in. And you think, oh, yes, yes, yes. This is what I want. I, I want this. You know, it says, I mean, there, there are many people who enjoy heavy metal music, and you might be one of them, and, and, and say that Christian metal music is not inherently wrong because they say music produced and committed by committed Christians who desire to communicate biblical truth, you know, is, is okay. They say it's okay. People, I'm telling you, it's not okay. It says, finally, brethren, it's just in the, this is the, you know, in Philippians, it says, finally, brethren, believers, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and whatever is confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure, whatever is wholesome, whatever is lovely brings peace whatever is admirable admirable of good repart if there is any excellence if there's anything worthy of praise think continually on these things center your mind and implant them in your heart i'm sorry but heavy metal music doesn't meet any not one of those bits of criteria. So, what are you going to do today? What are you going to choose to do today? I, I, I appreciate you all being here today. I appreciate that you're listening to what I have to say. And like I said, I was very much part of it. You know, it possessed me. It was who I was. It was enough who I was that I started a whole label you know, of it, you know, thinking I was going to reach all these thousands of people only to allow them to fall into captivity. I've done great amounts of repentance for it. You know, I'm here today specifically bringing a warning because I've seen what's happened to the people that I've brought into some of these areas. I saw what happened to me. So thank you again. So today, you know, I, I, if you're choosing to be a headbanger, a metalhead, be diligent and certain about your calling. For sure, that behavior does not reflect and confirm your relationship with God. Thanks for being here. You can come and see many of my friends Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, you know, at 8.30. Or go to our website, wordoffaithfellowship.org, you know, and you can see them and hear them all there. But again, be more diligent. Make certain about your calling. Be sure your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. For by doing these things, actively developing these virtues, you will never stumble in your spiritual growth, and you will live a life that leads others away from sin. For it is in this way, entry into eternal life of our Lord Jesus, Savior, Jesus Christ, will abundantly be provided for you. I'm sure that's what you want. I'm sure that's what I want. That's why I'm here today. I want to be one of those that's helping lead others away from sin. And, and that was my message today. That was my warning today. Please heed this warning. Don't think you're one of those that think Christian heavy metals is okay because it's Christian. It does nothing but portray Satan. It does nothing but portray paganism. It does nothing but steal your eternal life. Again, thank you very much for today. Thank you for the privilege that I have to be able to share this 
before you. Thank you.